What's up everybody? It's Brett here, the Rusty Nut. I thought I decided to call my channel name because I'm a bit of a nut and everything that we deal with up here in Aroostook County, Maine is rusty. So I figured it worked. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys, I'm going to be, well, I'm going to be installing the new valve seals, new valve springs, that whole nine yards. But to do that, I need a valve spring compressor and I haven't been able to locate one that I can keep my hands on for nothing. So I hopped on YouTube and I found another video on how to make one for these and I'm gonna try it myself because I have everything to laying around and do it. Uh, the valve, valve spring kit I'm putting in from Texas Speed, it's actually really nice. The valve seat and the valve seal are an integrated uh, one piece setup. So uh, I'm gonna let these sit, I just washed them so I'm gonna let them dry a little bit. Uh, then uh, I'll get all set up to build the valve spring compressor and I'll get right back to you guys. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to measure between this stud base and that stud base. So, I mean, go to Harbor Freight, get yourself a cheap ass pair of these things. You get a good, uh, Good estimate. I mean, you can always drill your holes a little bigger. It's not a huge deal. Looks like we're going with 1.9 inches. Okay. Now, what I'm using to do this is just some basic tools. You know, you got your, your angle grinder there. Uh, you're going to need a C clamp. I suggest going to Harbor Freight and pick up one of these bad boys. Cheap enough. I'm going to be cutting that up. You're probably starting to get the idea of what I'm doing. Uh, that's the calipers I just used. They're a cheap brand. They work. Um, you know, want some drill bits, obviously. It's a nice kit. Pretty cheap. They work. They burn out pretty easy, but they work. And uh, just some scrap metal. I had five years ago, I was working on an old Chevy pickup, and the bed mounts were rotted out. So I went to a local fabrication place and they made these up for me, but I never used them. So they're scrap metal to me. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, first I'm going to make a, a base plate to screw down to the uh, the base there where I just measured between the, the two studs. And uh, I'm going to drill the hole so that I can bolt it down to that stud. And then I'm going to wind up cutting this somewhere in this area and welding it to it. But it's also going to sit this is going to sit out too far and go past the valve, so I'm going to have to cut here and weld it again right there, but that's no big deal. It's shitty metal, but I should be able to work with it. And, uh, alright, so I'm going to start doing that. And, uh, okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking this piece of scrap metal, and between the center of your center to your, your studs where you're going to be putting your bolt holes is 1.9 inches. Obviously, you have to go further than that, you know, make it wider than that. I'm making it just a little bit wider than the, the I'll call them the stud bosses there. So all I'm using a screwdriver is to score it. There's the line there. Now I'm just going to measure across what I want. And we'll go with that since the uh, since I have to weld the piece of the C-clamp to it. This isn't precision work, but it will work. Here on the Rusty Nut, you'll see me do some stuff some oddball ways, but I tell you what, it's always going to work. Alright guys, I got the tool done. This is basically what it comes out to look like. I had to cut the C-clamp here, so that way I could have my distance between here and up here. And uh, then, I just used basically the same measurement there, and it's from center hole to center hole, and I, you know, cut that out. Just put that over the, the, the valve springs, you bolt this down, and it, it works. I'll, uh, I'll show you here in a second. First, I got to, uh, I want to finish putting all the, the valve seals on. Which, uh, another trick I learned online, actually, you might like it. So, 
So all you do is you take, I think this is a water pump bolt if I'm not mistaken. Simply just take one of those. And I'm using a, well, this is a 12 millimeter wrench. You need to drive the bolt down in pretty far to get it done. I put a little oil on the threads. I'm going to wind up cleaning that back off. I don't know if that really matters or not. And all this is is just a, a half inch socket. Well, probably like an inch and three quarters, maybe two inches long. All you do is you take your wrench, put that under there. Make sure it's pretty well, you know, on there even. And then you just push her on there. Easy as that. I won't bore you with doing the rest of these. Ah, you know what, I'll do one more for you guys, just in case. Just in case you want to see it. I think it's a water pump bolt, a 12 millimeter wrench. Like I said it's, it's a socket. It's it's not even two inches long, but. If you have a different size socket, that's all right. I mean, you don't want it too long because if you got it too long, then you'll need to have this bolt further out and you'll be grabbing less threads and then you'll take more of a chance of just pulling your threads right out. So that's why I wanted to find a shorter one. I could put the bolt down in further so we grab more or less chance of, you know, screwing something up. And all you do is just put it on there, push her down. That's that. All right, we're going to fast forward through these next ones. Take your valve springs, drop them on, drop them on the retainers, take this, bolt that down, if this thing breaks I went up in the ER, I'll, uh, I'll post pictures. Let's hope that doesn't happen. I would not recommend, you know, using full strength with this thing and aluminum heads.
Just use them until they snug. And you simply take this piece, go over the holes. See what the only downside to your custom tool like this after you make it is you have to kind of center them, the springs. Not that hard, I suppose. Drop your valve lock in. Yeah, it doesn't work perfect, but it does get the job done. So, that's what really matters. So, I kind of... Alright, I'm just having trouble getting the holes lined up, but I'll, uh, I'll get her. You get the picture. I can't believe it actually worked. Alright, I'm probably going to fast forward through this next bit of stuff here.
that guys is uh, well, that was my makeshift way to do it. And it worked. Now, just for safe bet, just make sure they're seated. That's too well. Just quick tap. There. Those are all good to go. Well, I'm not going to bother filming the other head. I don't want to bore you guys too long, but, uh, but yeah, that's basically how this little tool worked. And, you know, there's another video I saw in here, and it worked out great. So all you do is just get a piece of flat stock steel. I cut mine out of that piece I showed you, but uh, then you just take your calipers, and those two holes center to center measure 1.9 inches. Um... What I'm probably going to do is go back and drill these holes out just a hair bigger. That way, you know, um, there isn't a chance that it could, like, gall up threads or anything like that. I don't think it will. It didn't on these, so uh, it should work fine. And then you just take your C-clamp. And, of course, what you want to do is you can see that this is flat, but this is at an angle. I did that because when that's sitting flat on here, the angle of the, you know, the screw here, is the same as the valves that way it pushes down flat uh, I don't think it would work if you know you're trying to push it on an extreme angle you know what I mean but uh, as simple as that then this these two center to center is the same measurement 1.9 inches and then you just make obviously make the holes bigger so you have some access to put your locks in uh, but other than that uh, I'll say that's a wrap for for this time uh, next will probably be the the Transgo HD2 kit and my 4L80. Uh, I'm waiting on head gaskets and ARP head studs to show up from Summit. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, I'm pretty excited. I have most everything I need to drop this motor in the car. So hopefully not, it's Thursday now, July 4th, not this weekend, but hopefully the following weekend. Um, hopefully I'll be able to drop it in. I think I should be able to. I don't see why I couldn't. Uh, the only other thing I got to do when I drop it in is uh, I have to uh, put the trans mount in. Uh, the whole system that I'm using is all hooker mount, so it all works together. And uh, I'll do a video on that just in case, you know, you guys are using the same kit. That way you can see how it's done. Uh, another guy on here, if you're doing an LS swap in a Nova and you need any advice, like say you're using all the hooker and holly stuff like I am, uh, look up Billy Fargan. Billy Fargan. The guy doing the same exact thing I am. His is done already. His is actually pretty cool, though. Um, yeah, just look him up if uh, my videos aren't good enough. He goes in depth pretty good on all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, that's a wrap for this time, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video. And uh, I'll see you next time. Have a happy 4th, and don't blow your fingers off.